In a secluded village tucked away in the misty mountains of Japan, there stood a forsaken mansion at the edge of a dense forest. Local legends spoke of the mansion as a place of unspeakable terror, haunted by a Rokurakubi, a yokai infamous for its ability to stretch its neck to alarming lengths. The rumors told of a woman whose elongated neck was not merely a grotesque feature, but a tool of malevolent intent used to prey on anyone who dared to approach. One evening, a young and skeptical journalist named Haruto arrived in the village. Known for debunking supernatural claims, Haruto was determined to disprove the Rokurakubi legend. Armed with his camera and recording equipment, he resolved to spend a night in the mansion and capture evidence of the supposed ghostly occurrences. As twilight descended, Haruto approached the mansion. Its dilapidated silhouette loomed ominously against the darkening sky, its windows dark and lifeless. The front door, barely hanging on its hinges, creaked open with a push. Inside, dust-covered furniture and cobwebs filled the air with a musty odor. Haruto, undeterred, set up his equipment, determined to expose the truth. Hours ticked by in eerie silence, and Haruto began to feel an unsettling presence. The mansion's atmosphere grew heavier, the temperature plummeting, as if the building itself was exhaling a cold breath. Though he tried to maintain his composure, a growing unease gripped him, a feeling that he was being watched. At midnight, a faint whisper echoed from the darkness of the hallway. Haruto frowned and followed the sound, his flashlight cutting through the oppressive gloom. The whisper grew louder, a low, indistinguishable murmur that seemed to seep from the very walls. Without warning, Haruto's flashlight flickered and died, plunging him into near total darkness. Panic set in as the whispers turned into a sibilant hiss, echoing from every corner. He fumbled for his backup flashlight and managed to turn it on, casting a narrow beam of light down the hallway. It was then that he saw it, a grotesque elongated neck stretching from one side of the hallway to the other. The neck moved with an unnatural fluidity, twisting and reaching toward him. Haruto's heart raced as he glimpsed the Rokurakubi's head, her face distorted into a nightmarish grin that defied human anatomy. Her hollow eyes seemed to pierce through the darkness, unblinking and malevolent. Desperation took over and Haruto stumbled backward, but the Rokurokubi's neck continued to extend, the whispers escalating into a cacophony of anguished voices. The mansion's corridors seemed to stretch endlessly, warping around him as he ran. The whispers grew louder, drowning out all other sounds as if the very walls were alive with torment. Haruto burst into a room and slammed the door shut behind him. He leaned against it, panting heavily, and surveyed his surroundings. The room was cluttered with old, sheet-covered furniture, and a large mirror stood in one corner. As his breathing slowed, Haruto noticed that the mirror's reflection was not of the room, but of the Rokurakubi's grotesque face. Her eyes were locked onto him with a malevolent gleam, and her mouth twisted into a silent, mocking smile. The mirror began to crack, spider-webbing from the corners. With each crack, the Rokurakubi's face seemed to grow more distorted, her neck stretching through the fractures. The room grew colder, and the whispers transformed into a deafening roar, as if the mirror itself was screaming in agony. In a frantic bid to escape, Haruto grabbed a nearby chair and smashed the mirror. The glass shattered into a thousand pieces, but the whispers did not cease. They became a relentless, discordant noise that filled his head. The Rokurakubi's head emerged from the wreckage, her mouth widening into a silent, inhuman scream. Overwhelmed by terror, Haruto collapsed to the floor. His vision blurred, and the whispers faded into a suffocating silence. The last thing he saw was the Rokurakubi's face looming over him, her eyes cold and empty, reflecting a void of despair. The next morning, the villagers discovered the mansion abandoned. Haruto's camera and recording equipment were found intact, but he was nowhere to be seen. The footage showed only static and strange, distorted sounds, devoid of any clear evidence. The mansion remained abandoned, and the legend of the Rokurakubi grew darker. Villagers whispered of the journalist who vanished without a trace, his last moments haunted by the terrifying embrace of the Rokurakubi's whispering neck. So remember, some legends are best left unexamined. If you enjoyed this tale, 
Make sure to like and subscribe for more eerie stories.